Hey guys, uh, lovely talking to you, or at least uh, talking at you and reading your notes and then talking about those too. Listen, I wanted to uh, make a couple comments about something that I've picked up in some of the threads here about a question, a really fascinating question I think you guys have come up with. Whether or not that, and the question that I want to talk about is whether or not Confucius is a religious thinker or not. Um, this really is interesting because there are a lot of different ways in which you can answer it. And a lot of scholars have spent a lot of time trying to think about this and work through this. Here's some ways of approaching it. If you mean by a religious thinker or a religious leader, uh, someone who is an incarnation of God or a, uh, a divinely appointed figure or something like that, then I'd have to say no. And the reason why I'd have to say no is quite simply because there isn't really a sense of the divine in classical Chinese thought in general, or in Confucian thought in particular. I mean, yes, they have divinities, they have gods and so forth, but the role of gods is more like forces of nature. They're not gods in the sense of the alpha and the omega, the thing that creates and generates and sustains the world. That's a profoundly Western idea. It's in, it comes out of the Semitic tradition. It's very pronounced in the Greek tradition. It's not in the classical Chinese thought at all, really. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the interesting things about classical Chinese thought is not just that, that they don't have an idea of God, it's that the idea of God never comes up. They still wonder about the totality of things, and there are still concepts to help try to address that wonder, concepts like Tao and Qi that we'll talk about uh, uh, next week. But as far as a concept of a creator and sustainer of the world, in classical Chinese thought, not really. So trying to say if, if Confucius was supposed to be the messenger who was brought down from heaven, no. He doesn't see himself that way, and that really doesn't make any sense within the classical uh, Confucian context. And another thing I would say um, is if you think of him as something of a mystic, a revealer of hidden truths, I would also say no. Um, Confucius is nothing if not worldly. I mean, the, the insights that he offers, you'll notice, very much have to do with very mundane, immediate, humane sorts of things. There isn't a way in which he delves into the depths of, uh, of hidden aspects of reality. There are ways later on in certain forms of Confucianism uh, that, that this does come about, especially when it mixes with Taoism and becomes a little bit eclectic in the, oh, the first few centuries of the Common Era. This comes out a little bit more, and certainly in a period called Neo-Confucianism, which goes from, or the ideas of Neo-Confucianism, which go from probably, oh, I'd say about the beginning of the 9th century of the Common Era to about the 15th century, 16th century. But, um, uh, and so in that sense, no, he's not, he's not a religious thinker. However, a religious thinker, I don't think, necessarily has to do with the idea of God or the divine. It doesn't have to do necessarily with mystery. Um, you know, if you think about the word religion itself, it's a tricky word. Uh, in English, it's derived from the word religare in Latin, which means to be bound. And let me offer you one interpretation of the word religion uh, from this. I'm not sure it's a complete or perfect interpretation. Well, I don't think it is a perfect interpretation, but, but, it's a, uh, but it's one way to begin approaching some reflections upon what the idea of religion is generally. It's this. What if we think about religion as a way of being bound to the rightness of a cosmology? That is, a way of being tied, of feeling ourselves resonate with the rightness of things uh, as a totality and ways of engaging with that rightness. If we think of religion that way, then it seems to me we might be able to think of Confucius as a religious thinker. But not as a religious thinker in the sense of a prophet, not in the religious thinker in the sense of a mystic, not really a religious thinker even in the sense of a priest. He's a religious thinker in the sense of a teacher, and really in some sense almost as a therapist, of someone who brings us in line with what we already are, right? This resonance of uh, emerging possibilities within the dynamic of relationships that we are, and that we perpetually are. I mean, remember this whole idea that I, that I was trying to get across, that Roger Ames has tried to talk about a bit, that 
for a person to be what they are within Confucianism is for them to be this resonance within a nexus of relationships, right? To be this, this humming, this humaneness that expresses itself, almost like a verb. You are this becoming within this web of relationships. Now, if that's what you are, if that's what makes you what you are, um, then there's very much a sense, I think, that you are, you become what you are, you live as you are, you, you, you discover your true nature, your place in the universe through the cultivation of these relationships. Confucius is simply in this respect a teacher who shows us ways in which to cultivate these relationships. He's an instructor, a trainer, if you like. Someone who helps us, he sees himself, helping us come into contact with these things. But these things, oh, these, these relationships are not mere relationships. There's no such thing as a mere relationship. These relationships are the defining chords and characteristics. They're the very possibilities of what give rise to us. So that aspiring to become a master of these relationships, to become a gentleman, to become, remember this word, a junza, right, J-U-N-Z-I, it's mentioned here in a number of places in the reading. Um, to aspire to become that is not just to become a really swell guy. To aspire towards, towards becoming a junza is to move towards a kind of self-realization or perpetual self-realization, a way of knowing how to be just right in every relationship so that whatever that relationship is, you are able to be present in it, to emerge within it, and to bring out the emergence of others. Remember, you aren't just yourself. You are a relation. You are an I and you. This is what makes the person the person. There is no I. There is no you. There is this emergence of the two in dynamic relation with one another. The Junza knows how to, to do this the way in which the chef or the artist or the musician know, or the athlete knows just how to be, how to act, how to, how to position in that dynamic situation that they're in, right? If you see the, the cultivation of the junza, the realization of the junza, as being something that is part of a religious ideal cosmology, if that's what you're going to say, if, you, if that's the direction you want to go, then, yes, I think you probably could say that Confucius is a religious thinker. So, he is not divinely inspired. He is not a mystical revealer of hidden truths. He is, however, a teacher, someone who helps us come to realize what we fundamentally are and what we fundamentally can become, namely this resonance of humaneness, of authoritative conduct, of benevolence, of Ren within this ever-shifting dynamic set of relationships that we are. That's what, and if that's a religious leader, if that's a religious teacher, then so be it.